when I have only five minutes for this one, and <laughs> see how well I, I can do it. What I really would like to convince you of that we need a task theory in AGI. Uh, I'm not going to talk so much about uh, what it might look like because there certainly won't be time for that. Um, also, it's somewhat involved and it doesn't, it's <coughs> not really suitable for a lecture like this. Certainly not a short one and certainly not one uh, where I'm getting squeezed for time. But um, let me see what I can do in trying to convince you that we're trying to plant the seed that you might in the future be convinced that uh, such a thing as a task theory would be good. So the concept of task, we talk about this all the time. We, uh, we build AGIs basically to do tasks. I mean, that, that's this is the standard reason for making AG, for AI systems these days. Um, the story is a little bit different for AGI, but I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but, so we talk about tasks all the time, and in fact tasks uh, are the core of what we propose as ways to measure the level of intelligence of, of a AGIs. Uh, there's been plenty of papers on this uh, already. But I don't think it's really good for a field that one of its central concepts remains loosely or ill-defined or undefined. Uh, no, not at all. And um, we've been really busy in, the, in AGI uh, certainly, and, and somewhat in AI as well, AI being sort of the more goal-oriented, perhaps, uh, uh, wing of, of, the, of the AI community, to, uh, to construct tests that will tell us a binary conclusion whether some system is intelligent or not. And then we've also been thinking about sort of what kinds of tests will tell us whether it's an AGI or not. Um, but I think, uh, we really need to turn, and, and that could go on forever, and I don't, don't really see uh, how we can conclude that without more, uh, a deeper understanding of what a task is, in fact, and, and how tasks combine, how, how tasks are related, and so on. Um, because what, for instance, uh, in an AGI that is capable of transfer learning, what does it mean that's, that task A is similar to task B, or that task B is more similar to task A than task C is? Uh, we have no way of talking about this uh, at all, and it seems very uh, central. So uh, we need to turn our attention to the concept of task, but, uh, uh, and, and hopefully create some theory of it. So I'll, I'll, I'll uh, go, this is the, really the key part um, anyway, so if, I, if I'm cut short on time, you will have gotten the, the main point. So I'll tell you, what we uh, might want from a task theory in terms of evaluation, uh, first and foremost, secondly, for pedagogy uh, as in training learners, uh, artificial learners, and then uh, uh, lastly, appropriate we'll skip over design. But uh, you can see that in the paper. So evaluation is really critical, uh, not just in the human world for determining who gets to fly airplanes and so on, but also uh, in AI uh, and in science, in fact, to, uh, to understand whether we're actually making progress on our research goals or not. Uh, for AI systems, you know, it, it, evaluation is very useful for seeing if we have made some improvements over the last version. Um, and also, of course, for comparing approaches, uh, because there's a vast uh, array of approaches people are taking. Um, we also uh, use evaluation, of course, to understand the scope. So in AGI, we want to make more general systems well. How do we measure generality? So anyway, I don't need to convince you of this, probably. Um, in um, in uh, 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 highly targeted systems, uh, narrow AI systems, you have a very good idea of the tasks they're going to be doing. This is why you're building it. And so you just test them on that task, or variations of that task, and that's not a problem. But in AGI, uh, we're building systems that uh, will address problems that we couldn't foresee when we built them. So that makes it much harder, in fact, to come up with ways for testing them. Um, uh, and here's a picture uh, that sort of uh, captures this. If the animals are our AI systems, you know, there's, I don't see any hope of uh, us coming to a conclusion that climbing a tree or doing anything, replace the tree with anything else, is, is an appropriate way to measure our AI systems. No, 
That's not how it's going to work. Uh, if we break this down a bit, um, each of these uh, bodies here have uh, a controller. That's the brain. Um, they each have, have bodies with different features uh, that have very little to do with the controller. Yes, of course, in the animal kingdom, uh, the controllers are sort of developed for the bodies, more or less. Um, but let's for, for a second just imagine that uh, uh, this is AI now. And so you, you can have an AI controller or an AI system or, or a system controller that um, jumps between bodies. That, that's not uh, hard to imagine. Uh, the body comes with some constraints. The controller comes with some, some constraints. In AI, we want to understand how good our controller is. Um, so uh, we pick some tasks. And the task here is the tree, the climbing the tree. But for a bird, you know, um, climbing the tree, uh, you know, is very different than, say, the monkey. Uh, because the bird can just fly there. So, the, so measuring the, having a measure of the height of the tree is not going to tell us much about the bird's performance on this task. But it may very well predict a lot of the other animals, certainly the fish, the elephant, uh, the seal. Um, so we need uh, you know, some measures for, for this task. We need the height of the tree, we need a uh, branching factor, say, the, the thickness of the trunk, the, the thickness of the branches, the bark coarseness, and so on. Um, and this is what a task theory in AI should allow us to do. To, have the, to make a list like this, where um, when you take the list, you know, given any sort of body with any sort of controller, you can make some very good predictions about what, uh, the, how the, the system will behave. Right? Um, Another way to look at it is, you know, you have an agent, you have a task, and you have an environment. Each of these are multidimensional, where it becomes very hard to ensure that they're identical. Because if you really want to measure uh, the agent's performance, you know, the top of the pyramid uh, triangle, you, you have to keep uh, the task and the environment constant. So um, when, you, uh, when you look at the interaction between uh, for various agents, agent one to agent n, um, that you you understand that the what you're measuring is caused by the interaction of the agent with the task in the environment, not some changes in the task in the environment. Um, and this is, of course, what um, science, scientific experiments are all about. So I shouldn't have to tell you this. Um, so another thing that a task theory will do is be able to handle variations in the task in the environment. So to relax the constraints that uh, we have to have everything identical. Like, I cannot uh, compare our uh, reinforcement learners because you had it to do uh, diving for gold and I had to do uh, mouse chase, uh, mouse cheese kind of a, or cat mouse kind of a scenario. Um, a task theory should be able to, uh, should enable us to make some comparisons even though the tasks and the environments are slightly different. Um, and, and secondly, um, for pedagogy, uh, if you're trying to teach a system with certain properties, some task, uh, a, a good task theory would allow you to, to um, uh, pare that, that task down into chunks in a way that makes the training more efficient, just like we teach kids that, uh, what the names of the letters are before we teach them to read words, and so on. So, um, this would also be highly useful for for um, uh, for allowing us to construct correct pedagogical content. And lastly, for design, um, we could take some of the trial and error out of uh, evaluating and testing uh, and designing systems for various tasks if we had a good understanding of what tasks are hard for what kinds of systems. Um, so here's really the, the key part, and I think I'll have to stop there. Um, a task theory should support comparison of similar as well as dissimilar tasks. Of course, there's some limit to this. Uh, some tasks are just completely different, possibly, 
but that's also what a test reader would be able to tell us. Abstraction and concretization. So, for instance, in uh, at some level of abstraction, these tasks A and B are equivalent, but some of the details actually are different, and then this matters. And how does it matter? Well, that might depend on the system we're actually having to do the task, but at least then we have an ability to do so, to see that. Um, it should allow us to estimate time, energy, etc. Uh, for any sort of combination of, of a, here's a here's a robot or here's an agent, I want it to do X Y Z. Well, X Y Z is a, of, of a particular kind, so that tells me a lot about how long it will take to, for it to do it. Um, so, characterization of, of tasks in in a modular way, which would allow you also to construct new tasks, um, composite tasks um, intended for some purpose to evaluate an AI and so on. Um, so there's a bunch of other things. And uh, in the paper, we have some uh, uh, more details on this and uh, some examples of implemented uh, prototypes. Uh, we've looked at some of these tasks. For instance, these are well-known, full balancing, mountain well car, et cetera as well as uh, whack-a-mole, lost and cheese, and so on. So in conclusion, the task theory in, in AI um, would separate tasks from in, uh, and environments from the agents and from the controllers and make their measurement way better, easier, uh, more structured, more um, uh, uh, scientific. And uh, yeah, here's, a, here's some others. I think I mentioned most of these already. So, and not for anything else, but to provide a stronger foundation for our evaluation. So that's it. Thank you.